Hey, welcome back to my session. We are going to look at market risk for the financial risk management part 2 exam in this video. My blog is stock credit finance cfa.blogspot.com where you can get the powerpoint and other videos. A, a slight disclaimer, the term FRM is copyright to GARP. This video is intended for learning research and reporting about the exam. I don't represent the FRM institute nor I am an authorized trainer and I don't guarantee accuracy of the information. Okay, let's jump into it. So market risk for the uh, FRM part 2 exam. It comprises of five quant topics if you were to look at something which is mathematical. It starts with copula which is uh, something which is more uh, intrigue than uh, the correlation. Then we have the extreme value theorem. That's a general theorem which uh, then goes into things like uh, Pareto distribution and different kinds of distribution. Then we have around 10-15 uh, exotic option, but we don't have valuation, so that's a very small part. Uh, then we have the volatility smiles, which comes from the implied volatility for the black shoals. And then we have the uh, maximum likelihood. So these are some things which requires a little bit of quant. And yes, uh, the exam has got a lot of theory part and a lot of quant part. So I have segregated the quant part and give it a, given it here. Okay, something which is continued from part 1 is the parametric and non-parametric method. Just to quickly revise, parametric method have assumed distribution whereas non-parametric method uses historical simulation with different aspects. Then we have the delta normal var, the log normal var, which is uh, like 95% of uh, guarantee or surety that our pro loss would not be greater than this point and things like that. So that uh, takes an assumption of normal distribution and find the area under the curve and things like that. For that they have the log normal distribution var which is given in this formula. Then we have a coherent risk measure which gives uh, weight to the quantiles. So it's a little bit detailed so it can give weights to uh, say suppose the expected shortfall or the things which is uh, seen when the 95% level is breached. So they can give weights to different quartiles like top 5 quartile or the least 5 quartile and things like that. Then we have the historical which is also the non-parametric estimation and then in there we have various weighted historical simulation. There is something continued from the part 1 of the FRM exam. And there is uh, something called the quantile quantile plots. You don't need to know much. It's you need to know just two points that it is used to fit in the assumed distribution to the real data. And if it's linear, it means that uh, the match is perfect. For more uh, detail, you can check out Wikipedia if you would like to. Okay, coming to the heart of uh, uh, what we see in the FRM market track. So we have this thing called copula. It's a kind of correlation. Uh, what it does is that it finds out a multivariate function uh, which links all these univariate marginal distribution. So just try to be with me when I talk about this one. You can check out more videos on copulas. So we have suppose fx as a function uh, which gives us u and we have fy which uh, gives us v. Now we are looking for a function such that we can get in fx and y which are actually uh, giving us this u and v. So we have x and y and we are linking this down to u and v. Okay, so if something is log normally distributed and normally distributed and we look for a correlation that goes a bit weird. So we can take out that uh, log normal or the normal effect and we can find out how x and y variables are linked up. So just for an example, if x and y, if we take x and y, then we take log x and log y for various values and then we calculate uh, the correlation for both of them, x, y and log x, log uh, y uh, stream. So they would be different. So this is a kind of uh, a function that separates all those log effects so that you can find out the real linkages between x and y. And you can find out how this log and log x, y are related to x and y. So just check out more. If you were to understand it by one line, it's the function that joins a multivariate function to a collection of univariate marginal distribution. Here, these two are the univariate marginal distribution and this is something which combines both of them. So we are looking for a bigger function, sorry this is C, which is the function of U and V. But we'll, we want to put out values of X and Y. 
okay this is something about the copula it's a quite uh, complicated thing so uh, just uh, check out more details from Wikipedia then we have different types of copula which includes the Gaussian copula Gumbel, Archimedean and extreme value copula we'll take a separate session on this thing okay now uh, in FRM market risk here we are studying a more advanced part of what we did in uh, the part 1 exam so we study a generalized uh, form of extreme value theorem which has a third parameter which is useful to calculate uh, the fatness of the tails so that's point one then we also study something called the peaks over threshold approach the peaks over threshold approach defines a random variable x to be loss and says that okay the far you go the less loss you can have so they have chosen a variable for x Okay, then we have the generalized Pareto distribution, maximum likelihood estimate and a comparison of all these parametric methods. The first place to read about it to get sensitized is Wikipedia, of course. Okay, then when we move ahead to apply all of these things to uh, the basal and uh, those regulatory framework, then we have the uh, uh, something called the backtesting and VAR mapping. Now backtesting calculates the number of exceptions look at point four so the back testing says that you can only have 2.5 exceptions which is uh, uh, I think 99 percent of 255 days or something like that and if you have more exceptions than this one if exceptions are happening more then you can increase the capital multiplier which are the kind of reserves so that is something about the back testing and how it is related to Bayesian then we have the failure rate uh, rates in the model verification and uh, again the back testing part we can increase uh, we are to s increase uh, the capital requirement if our limits are breached or there are more exceptions so there are, there are something about that then we have the conditional average which takes into effect the timing of these exceptions and for web for the mapping we have uh, the price sensitivity so we map our portfolio on three aspects one is duration the other is the a principal amount and the uh, third one is uh, the cash flows so different durations different convexities and different uh, cash flows so there is something about the back testing and war part that we have fixed income in a more detailed way where we look at multi-factor approach uh, and we use the key rate shift so the key rate shift says that if suppose there is uh, a change of uh, interest for the seven year spot rate then how would it affect your bond so even if your bond is not of a seven year but since the rates change of uh, the spot rates of different maturity change how much are those going to affect on your bond so tomorrow uh, the rates of two year spot changes seven year spot changes and so on so how are all these changes going to reflect in your portfolio so that's about key rate shift it's used where uh, uh, this is it's a kind of advanced thing of disease spread that we studied in part one okay then we have the science of term structure model which starts with the binomial tree for the interest rate and moves ahead into the uh, black shoals the multi-factor edging is again the same key rate shift kind of a thing then we have the yield curves and we have three duration modified McClure and effective duration and their interpretation this is something about the fixed income that we have coming to the volatility smile the first step in volatility smile is to uh, calculate the implied volatility using market rates of call and put option using the black scholes model so we are putting the co prices of uh, put and call and getting back the uh, volatility then we have the put call parity you must understand this very important equation then we have these smiles for currency equity uh, and different uh, aspects okay so the currency or uh, volatility smile would be even whereas equity would have uh, an assumption of high volatility when we talk about low prices so there is something on that then we have uh, a revision of option Greeks and price jumps this, this is what we have a little bit in the volatility smile then we have 11 exerting options uh, like binary option volatility variance options but we just have the theory so we don't need to worry about valuation valuation is not in the exam but if you are curious those are based on black shoals and uh, tweaking the black shoals okay the end part of the market risk is then followed by mortgage backed security which starts with uh, uh, 
three aspects here which are quantitative in nature that is uh, the monthly repayment rates uh, the conditional prepayment rates uh, so those are the, the rates for the prepayment which uh, the people actually uh, uh, prepays uh, their principal of the loan so we guess that now the prepayment is based on the interest rate so these things might move up and down now valuation of MBS is done by Monte Carlo so they talk about uh, the number of parts that generally the analysts are taking uh, and which are the inputs which are the output which are the various uh, probability distribution they are assuming and then we have the option adjusted spread now uh, MBS have given uh, the loan taker an option to pay it back so they have like uh, uh, a put option to give back the loan so we have to find out the cost of this option which is based on uh, different uh, interest rate uh, uh, dependencies so something about that then we have the zero volatility and computation of option cost this is something something related to uh, the convertible bonds where we have put and call option in a bond so again in these kind of things we separate the bond into plain valina and compute uh, the price of those options using a uh, black scholes model assuming some volatilities and things like that so that was it so this was an overview of market risk syllabus for the frm level 2 i hope you found it useful thank you for watching my videos i'll try to upload some videos of the individual topic very soon thank you and best of luck for your exam